Hey, welcome everybody. Today we're going to be looking at digital CNC joints. Going to show you how to draw some, going to show you some references on where you can find some different ones, what types of tolerances you need to add, and how to cut these joints out. They'd be really difficult to do without a shop bought CNC machine, so sit back and let's see what happens. First thing, just to orient, we're using a shop bought desktop. Again, depending on the size machine you have, it's the same, you just have different footprint, different layout, but it's the same practice processes and practices. Uh, using a shop bought desktop today and I'm using a material called King Color Core where it's a black on the outside and then the different colors you can get and for the inner layer. This just helps show in the video. So what we're doing first is we're doing the pocketing of these different joints. There's going to be three different ones that I show you like the one on the initial video. And again, this goes back to order of operations, why we would cut the pocket before we cut the profile. If the profiles were cut and we try to aug all this material out, the part could come loose and the size isn't going to come out and the edge quality is not going to be as good. So um, take a look at different plastic bits for cutting this. Onsroot has some. Centurion Tools also uses one that we use for doing V-carving with the um, color core. It's nice stuff to cut soft, real quiet to cut, different colors, you can get different food grade, but for what we're doing for these joints, this is just so we can see it, they're going to snip together. So on this first video here, we're seeing three different joints being cut, and these are different joints that I actually found from a open source DXF website where I was able to bring these in. So that will be one of the references that we show in our PowerPoint presentation today. So as the joints cut out, again, there's three different ones and they did the pockets first, they did the profiles, you can see where it's doing the tabs, you can see where it's uh, having its ramp when it comes in. But look at the intricate parts of these joints, the, the curve to them. The shot about how it can cut this curve just as fast and accurately as it can cut a straight line. And how they've designed and built that into these three different types of joints right here. This one here is my favorite. This one we saw right at the beginning. It's just a rotated and it snaps together we need to figure out a tolerance though. If cut that with no tolerance, the shop bot will cut it so tight that it won't come back apart. So I found that through trial and error that it needed to add a little bit in. The next joint here is a little bit different style, but this one allows you to do a cross joint. And again, it just snaps together. And you can see there's no yellow on the face because it's a nice tight CNC joint. And then this last one works really well for when you have a shorter piece and you want to make it longer instead of just a butt joint you can add that in there and notice the thickness on that as well being a little bit off because I went a little too deep in the Z and we'll show you how to fix that when we zero in the VCarve Pro but let's look at a few things in digital fabrication and CNC joints it's nice to understand what's going on behind the scenes uh, I like to show this because this is when I used to teach high school woodshop we had no CNC these are all things that we did by hand traditionally and to be able to come in here and carve these logos out or cut these duplicate circles out or add joinery to these would save us from having to have a shop full of uh, both large and hand tools. So I really wish we would have had the technology that we have now uh, and be able to do that. But you know what? It's the best thing to do is to know how to do this stuff by hand and to how to do it traditionally and then incorporate that in. It will help you so much more with your designing in your CNC. So this is the project that was probably the most famous turnaround to become a CNC type project. Originally this Minwax American Woodworker chair back in the 1970s, just a simple patio chair. Um, there's your blueprints for it. And you see, besides having a full shop of heavy industrial machines, table saw, band saw, sanders, chop saw, joiner, to make all this, you also had to have several hand tools here, countersink, counterbore, uh, plug cutter, square, layout, a whole bunch of stuff here. Well, that was the traditional way of doing it. And what we've done here is adjusted it using a simple mortise and tenon joint. And we're going to build on that mortise and tenon joint and show several other CNC joints through this PowerPoint and uh, rest of the video here. But the point of this slide is showing you, look what I just went from having all those tools to nothing more than a bottle of glue and a hammer because I've now built that all, all the complexity and the joinery into the part itself. And I'm going to talk next about building complexity, but to see it right here, you can see that this is just a push together mortise and tenon joint, which to, to, traditionally could be a trick to cut as well. 
Uh, and look at what happens here. Here's the, for the, the leg being cut out without these extra tenons on them. Three inches per second, three passes, it takes a minute and 50 seconds. Now yes, I have taken some time and placed these and spaced these out, these tenons, but the same feed rate and the same speed, um, what I've got is now two minutes and five seconds. So it's 15 seconds longer to add those tenons to it. And you got four legs, there's an extra minute of cut time for the shot bot. So that extra minute of cut time, does that justify versus the maybe how many minutes you had in layout and uh, you know, writing down with pencil where your cross lines are to drill, yada, yada, yada. So uh, what I'm looking here is part complexity to get rid of external fasteners. And as we build on these CNC joints and they get more uh, complicated, you'll see this come together even more. When I first started with ShopBot, I sat in on training and Ted gets up, our creator and owner of the ShopBot tools, and talks about uh, CNC allows complexibility in the parts and he talks about CNC and our future and it really resonated with me and how I wanted to start designing these CNC projects so the biggest one is the embedded engineering into the parts our CNC tool can cut a curve just as fast and accurately as it can cut a straight line so take that into advantage of your part Add complexity to one part instead of having multiple complex parts. So you see those main chair legs, they've got all the tenons built right into them. I've taken and gotten rid of all these external fasteners and built all the complex complexity into those four legs. Uh, what this does now for us, having these CNC type joints that we'll keep looking at, is it allows us new methods of production and it saves complex assembly and time. So that's kind of the goal with with learning about these CNC joints and what we're able to do by moving forward with them. Here's one more to look at, this little collector's basket. You got uh, 20 different joints being, uh, tenons being added on here and it's only adding 22 seconds of cut time with the same feeds and same speeds. So start thinking about incorporating this kind of stuff into your traditional designs and see how the CNC can benefit for you even more. Uh, Here's just some references to get you looking at different ones. I went to Google when I was putting this together and uh, typed in, you know, CNC joints. Went to some of the websites that I'm a little bit more familiar with as far as using for reference. You know, Make Magazine, uh, very good as far as resource. Uh, went on there, typed in CNC joinery. And it's, it's neat to see all the different stuff that comes up. So I definitely tell you to get on our forum, get on our webpage. Get on some of these other pages and read up about this. There's a lot more than what I'm just showing in this video uh, of these couple joints that we're going to cut. And there's just a whole great reading uh, of, out there of this different CNC stuff. And the one I'm going to be referencing a lot today is called Flexible S Stream, an open design source. They've got 50 fantastic digital wood joints on there um, that you can download and, and cut out. Uh, Again, make sure you go on here and read about copyrights and sharing and all that. But for you to download some of these and practice cutting them out, uh, that's part of the license that's okay to do. Uh, but, you know, sharing the information or giving it out as your own is definitely illegal. So but for what we're going to do today, we'll download these 50 joints and start cutting some of them out and incorporating them into our project design. And I kind of like to finish up, you know, here's some of these uh, sources. But think about using the CNC digital joints to actually create a machine held together with these. So this is our handy bot. This is our latest and greatest uh, shop bot. It's a portable shop bot. Instead of having people bring material to your shop, you carry this to the job site. And it's all held together using CNC joints that either we've found or we've created on our own. So this is all HDPE plastic makes up the blue and the yellow frame and as you can see on this picture there's little crosses down here for the layout here's an indexing point that we use for the jig for uh, indexing longer pieces and go to our handybot.com you can actually go on here and you can download the plans for these and you can get the blueprints for all of the uh, cutting files and see how the joinery goes together on these. Here you can see us cutting all of these parts in-house on our bigger machines. And here's a couple of pictures of showing. Here's these um, 
Allen head screws that go up through. You can see the, the part has been uh, pocketed out on one side, and you can tell by looking up here that there's a little nut that uh, goes down in there. So that nut is held in place uh, by a pocket that fits that nut perfectly and goes a little bit longer for the extra length of that of that bolt for when it gets tightened. So here's a jig we made for the HandyBot. And again, you can go on here and read up all about HandyBots. The design for this is open source if you wanted to download and play with some of those joints. But I like to show this because this right here is a actual machine built using these CNC joints. All right, we're going to just create a new file. And we're going to come in and, and bring in a couple of those digital 50 joints that are able to be downloaded. Um, the part I have here in front of me is 12 inches long. It's 6 inches high. And the reason that last video showed the part being cut too deep was I didn't have my calipers to the exact width for the thickness of that material. And it's good for me, if I want to make sure I get a pocket to a certain depth, I'm going to zero it to the top. If I'm more concerned about cutting through my material, I would zero it to the bottom. But for now, I'm more concerned about getting that pocket just to the right depth. And I can tell my profile toolpath that cuts all the way out just to go a little bit deeper than the thickness. So here I am, just a 12 by 6 with a half inch material. So there's my work surface. Now, instead of me drawing these I actually went in, like I said, to the um, d digital joints and I downloaded them all and then bring them all in, instead of bringing them all in one by one right here at the folder, I'll bring in the DXF batch processor and that's a whole other tutorial in itself. You can go to Vectrix website and go to gadgets and you can learn how to use each one of these. But I'm pretty much pr selecting my file, telling how many I want in the X, how many I want in the Y, space between them and see what it says here number of files processed is 51 and wow look at what it brought in I keep zooming out it brought in 51 different beautiful CNC joints but it brought them in not quite the size I'm going to use it also brought them in so this is what you should look out anytime you use somebody else's file look at here this line isn't connected all the way around these are open vectors so it's not going to toolpath quite right. Sometimes you might have vectors on top of vectors. See here how it goes from a pink line, dash line, to two pink dash lines because there's a vector on top of vector. So you got to go in here and really look out for what you're doing. To keep current with the video that we used, this was the joint here that we used in the video. So I'm just going to select these and what I can do is hit F9. It puts them down here in the center. And since I don't need all this other stuff right now, we're only going to work on that one joint. I'm just going to select it all and delete it. I can always bring it in again later if I needed to. So obviously these things are way too large. They're not even going to fit on my 6x12 piece. Um, just to, you know, if, if it was something that had a slot, you'd want to scale it to the thickness of your material. For this one right here, I'm just going to say, hey, I do not need it 190 inches long. What if I only made it, say, 5 inches long? It would fit on my material a little bit better that way. And then again, I'll hit F9 to center it. A little shortcut key there. And F brings me into full screen. So here we are. Here's our two puzzle pieces that we saw in the video. But again, as I hover over these, I see they're open vectors. So to close vectors, you have the join open vectors function. You can also hit J on the keyboard. And we need to figure out which ones we need to join together. Well, we know we need to cut around the profile to cut the part out. And then we need to pocket down the middle. So let's do the profile first. I select it, and to select multiple vectors, I'm going to hold the shift key down, and I'm going to go around and select the outside. And I can see even with these four selected, I've got four open, and when I hit join, I'm still going to have one open. So somewhere in there, there's a gap or a void still. I zoom in down here, and I hold shift and select that. Now I've got one closed if I hit OK. So I will go ahead and hit join, and now I've made this one closed vector. So do the same thing down here. There's my outside pieces. I need to connect them with the middle. There's that little leg. Select that. And then bang, I've got that whole thing. When it hits close there, I hit join. Boom, I've got join vector. So 
let's go over and toolpath these and you can see what happens to the first portion and again this is something I'm going through so you can see it pretty quick but you'll want to play with this on your own the profile the toolpath around the outside of it I'm gonna go my material thickness and I'm gonna go just a little bit deeper into my material so I can make sure I'm cut all the way through in case it's not consistent I'm also going to use my eighth inch end mill and I want to cut on the outside of my vectors. So I'll select that and we could get into feeds and speeds but that's a whole other tutorial and I'm just going to preview what this looks like and I can see that I'm cut all the way around Click, double click to get rid of the scrap yes it's looking a lot like what it should be I'll ch double check it in 2D view as well I click solid I turn on my tool path and I can see that my tool path is getting in there. If you wanted to use a quarter inch bit, you could switch it, check this with the solid on and see if it gets in there. If it gets in there with a quarter inch, then you could do a bigger bit, maybe cut faster. Um, it's just something for you to, to look in there and check. So we're getting down in all these corners. Yeah, you may not be able to with a bigger bit. But we still need to pocket this middle part out so they can fit together. So I'll go back to the drawing side here. and a couple ways of looking at this. One is we want to pocket between this piece and this piece and I'm going to show you two, a way of closing these vectors. One if I just hit a straight line puts a straight line across right there and two if I hit draw a curve it puts a curve out there like that. Now when I go to toolpath we're going to have to again check in 2D to see if this is going to work. It's always good to check your work here so I don't want to go the full Z thickness. I want to go that divided by two. I want that exact so that's a nice fit lap joint. So, whoops. It's going to do whatever you tell it to do. Z divided by two equals 0.245. I'm going to use that same bit so I don't have to do a bit change. And again, I'm just doing a pocket. I'm not worried about all my feeds and speeds. That's a whole nother one. Let me reset and let me go preview all tool paths and again yeah it looks pretty good out here it looks like we're going around looks like we're in you know to, to the 3d view this looks pretty darn good um, but you wanna check with 2d view turn these turn that uh, turn these on turn solid on so, okay what's going on here the one where I did just a straight line across look th look at these white gaps here that's not getting in there. That means that's not being cut out if it's not purple. So that's not that's, that's enough material left in there. It's not going to fit together tight. We're down here where we arched it out. It was able to come around the in the radius of the tool and get down in there and clean that out. So a straight line didn't necessarily work. And sometimes just adding this arc isn't going to work. You might have to draw a straight line out the radius of your tool, straight line over, and then straight line back or bigger. So let's fix this and go back and, and have it done right. Uh, I know this line needs to come off there, so I'm going to go into node editing and, and delete that span. And now I'm going to tell it to join up with a smooth curve and put that on there. And I'll do the same thing down here. Again, I can just click draw a smooth curve. And for this application, it works great. There might be applications where you're just going to have to come in with your bit or with a drawing thing, find your end part and draw your own out here. But luckily for us right now, this is the perfect fit. So I'm just going to take advantage of this because it joins it all together by clicking that. So with that being said, I look back here under Pocket Toolpath, select these, and when I reset the preview, I'll now see that it looks good in 3D which it did before as well, but I also want to check it in the 2D toolpath with the solid turned on down in the bottom right corner and I see that I'm getting in there with that bit. If there's, if there's big white gaps in there, you either need to have a bigger out cut out here in your scrap material or you need to switch your bit size. Uh, also take your time, go back, I know we went through that part quick, but get your order of your operations ready for your cutting check your speeds, check your fees, make sure you're tabbed, but 
for taking another DXF and bringing it in, that's the way you want to check for open vectors, duplicate vectors, and preview in both the 2D and preview it in the 3D. That pretty much wraps up our intro to cutting with CNC digital joints. If you're looking for further information, get on our website, get on our forum, get on the internet. You can, With the new skills that you have, you can really dig into it a lot deeper and start incorporating these into your projects and you'll really appreciate what you're able to do with them. Thank you very much everybody. We'll see you next time.